These are solar cars, designed by TU Eindhoven. You maybe saw them on the news once. This is a car, but these are also cars that are designed by over 40 teams of bright minds that participate in the World Solar Challenge every year. They look like this, and like this, and even like this. And this one was driving 70 kilometers per hour with five people inside and still charging. That means that they just couldn't get the battery down. However, do you see yourself driving in this? Taking the kids to and from school, doing groceries, doesn't seem very practical. So, sorry to interrupt, but I don't think these cars are meant to be practical. They're the first step to some, something way bigger. I actually was part of such a team. In 2016, I joined the solar team of Twente in the east of the Netherlands. In one year, we made a solar car from scratch. We drove from Darwin to Adelaide, 3,000 kilometers through the outback without a single charge. I will never forget that moment that 30 kilometers ahead of us, there was water flowing over the road into a canyon. And we were afraid that our little solar car was going to be flow away in this canyon. So we could do two things. We could stop. We could carry the solar car over the water. And the second thing we could do was make a human ball and run like crazy people next to the car. Well, it doesn't seem to be necessary as the car is just driving through the water without any problems. I learned two things from this. First, with a motivated team, a professional team, you can literally do everything. And from all these solar races, solar mobility technically was proven. And this is amazing. You know why? Because solar mobility could contribute to solving climate change. Okay, but I'm going to be honest. For me, climate change is often a faraway concept that cannot be grasped quickly. However, last year, it also came to my doorstep. There were floods all over Western Europe in the midst of summer. And usually, the meadow behind my house looks like this. However, it began to look like this, and even like this. And although we were still smiling here, we already had to clear out our basement and almost had to flee our house. While people died from these floods, only 100 kilometers away. So I want to do something about this. Because I'm still on this planet, hopefully for a really long time, and I want to be able to tell my children that I did my best, instead of saying no one did anything about it. So what can I do in this right moment? Well, I know that transport and mobility are the greatest contributing factors to climate change. And as you can see, I'm not standing here by myself. Nienke has an engineering background, and I have a sustainable business background. You can see Nienke as the builder, and me as the idealist. Nienke has the technical knowledge, but I want to see the urgency. And together, we are complementing each other in our mission towards clean mobility for everyone, everywhere. As two young women, young women of 25 years old, we feel the need to contribute. And after all, the youth has the future. Did you know that the price of inaction already outweighs the, the upfront costs of climate action? That means that doing nothing right now is more expensive than doing anything at all for the climate problem. So we are proud to stand in front of you today because we are part of a team of 500 people who are building your future car. So, when I look in my human needs, I don't want to give mobility up, because traveling is important to me. And I believe I'm not the only one with this desire. As human, we love to travel for about one hour each day. We travel around 9.5 trillion kilometers a year on fossil fuels. That's one light year. So, Mobility is a human need, and we just need to make it clean. And we're already on a good way. Some of you might have arrived with the electric car. 
which is a great step towards cleaner mobility. Also, policies are adapting. From 2035, we cannot buy a non-electric vehicle anymore in more than 27 European countries. And these are great steps towards cleaner mobility. However, where the electric vehicle is much cleaner than the gasoline or the diesel car, it is still not emission-free. An electric car needs to be charged by a charging point, and this charging point is powered by power plants. And most of these power plants are still not clean yet. So indirectly, you're charging your car with fossil fuels. Moreover, the current energy system needs to change into a renewable one. We need to place charging points, replace the grid, and replace the dirty power plants. It's like building this house with bricks, and then realize that you need to replace the bricks with wood. It is a huge effort to do this, but it is necessary for our, our energy transition. And it's about to become a huge bottleneck. And we think we can make this a little easier and faster. But how? How can we use the powers of this universe? There's water, wind, heat. Well, let's start with what's the origin of all life on Earth. The sun. The sun literally enables all the other elements to go around. So mobility powered by the sun is not only much cleaner, but also much cheaper. Because if you're not getting the energy from the chargers and from the grid anymore, you can reduce your energy bills. I don't know about you, but did the sun ever send you an invoice? Picture for yourself. How long would the sun have to shine in order to provide the entire annual usage of humanity? That's all the air conditioning, all the lightning, all the electric appliances you have in your house in the whole wide world. Let me tell you, it's two minutes. Just two minutes. It's just the time that I'm talking to you right now. Isn't that crazy? Does that change the way you think about energy? Because what would you normally do with two minutes? Well, maybe brush my teeth or make a cup of coffee or tea. I can't even drink it in that time. Two minutes isn't a lot. So let's put it this way. We have an electric vehicle and put a solar panel on top of it. The energy is then directly fed in from the sun. You don't need the charging points, the grid, and the dirty power plants anymore. Problem solved, you would say. However, this is mostly too good to be true. An electric vehicle consumes a lot of energy, more than the solar panel technically can gain. Have you ever seen a bodybuilder running a, a marathon? Well, he will never make it because he's way too heavy. He needs to carry his own weight. He is not efficient and consumes a lot of energy. Electric vehicles are nowadays the bodybuilders in the marathon. And we are searching for the athletes. So we need to stimulate energy efficiency and limit energy consumption. And we think this is easy. Why not put an energy label on an electric vehicle, just like you do with a fridge or your house. So we now know that we have to change our ways of mobility. But the question is still how? If you find something that allows you to put the charger into the car, you will have solved a very big part of the energy transition. Right now, the energy transition is not going that fast. And we can help it because we are striving to not use a charger anymore, which, by the way, will save society billions of euros. And that while the charger rollout is way too slow, because if we want it to suffice our electric driving needs, it needs to go four times faster than it does now. It can be easier. We think that in 10 years, you will be able to offer almost everyone a car that no longer needs to be plugged in anymore, in the form of a long-range solar car. As a company, we started out in 2016, and we built a car from scratch, which is now available for on the public roads within six years. We are already 
putting solar on the roofs of our houses. So why not on the roofs of our cars, freed from charging? Can you imagine that in 10 years, chargers will be removed from the streets again, just as ATMs and payphones are removed from the streets right now? The light bulb was not invented by improving the candle. That means you have to think in new concepts. Be bold, step outside the beaten tracks. For us, that meant thinking in new markets. For example, why not put the motors into the wheels instead of under the hood? In that way, we created the world's most efficient drivetrain. Oh, and we also have the world's most aerodynamic car. That's because we're using cameras as mirrors and our wheel spats. On top of that is a double curved solar panel. And all of that developed right here in Netherlands, a country that is in the top 1% most cloudiest countries in the world. <laughs> in sunny countries like Spain, we are already driving energy positive. That means that you're generating more electricity than you consume. And actually, this car is a driving power bank. We're turning around the system, because instead of putting energy into your car, you can now get energy out of your car and use it to, for example, run your dishwasher on in your house. So this year, we're going to uh, put into production with our first model, and it will finally hit the roads. It has a range of 625 kilometers, and it will be a dream come true for everyone working on our team. We're aiming for 2024 to have our second model on the roads, which will be much more affordable. Mobility is the foundation of human progress. So why not use that progress and turn it into impact? So sometimes people say to me, nice project you're working on. And although their intentions are great, I always feel a little bad when hearing this. You know why? Because it is not just a project anymore. It is a solution for this huge problem that we're facing as mankind. We need to have all hands on deck to make the energy, energy transition possible as soon as possible. So together with 500 engineers, Liz and I, are on a mission to let people drive that same distance of one light year in kilometers, but then purely on the sun. Thank, Thank you. you.